Welcome, Mama, to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Finally, a podcast dedicated just to the mental and emotional world of us postpartum women. I am your friend, fellow mama, and postpartum life coach, Lizzie Langston. After intense birth trauma, delivering my first child, and really scary mental health crises following the birth of my second and third baby, I set off on a six-year journey to understand postpartum mental health from the inside out. On this podcast, I bring you as a mom of four and a certified postpartum life coach, the tools you need to avoid mental health crashes, to get out of the postpartum rut, and to embrace a vivacious motherhood that you love from the inside out. Let's get you feeling like yourself again, mama, and welcome to the Postpartum Coach Podcast. Hello, it's Lizzie Langston, your postpartum life coach, intuitive mentor, and friend. Thank you for being back here on the Postpartum Coach Podcast with us today. I have something that just kind of downloaded straight into my brain. So if you don't know this, I'm actually writing a book uh, right now, and I'm not exactly sure the form it's taking. It's in the creative process. But as I've been writing it, I I think it might be called Postpartum Freedom, but it's definitely going to be about a lot more than postpartum because the problems that we experience postpartum follow patterns that extend way before and beyond just that time in our life. So I'm really excited about it. It's going to definitely carry a lot of notes of women's empowerment. But anyway, as I've been writing this book, I've been thinking deeply, like deeply, like quiet house, nobody in my house, clean house, sit down, clear my schedule, I'm writing. And I'm thinking about the last five years of helping dozens and dozens of postpartum women. And I'm thinking about my story and the way that I was suicidal at one point and the way that I felt so trapped in a mind and a body that I didn't understand after doing my best to be the domestic woman, baby making woman that I thought that was like, you know, the jam. And it is in so many ways. But As I've been thinking deeply, some really clear things have been coming through. And so today's episode, your rights. I just came up with three. There's probably way more where this came from, but I was inspired with this idea that you have inalienable rights, okay? To steal a phrase from, I don't even know where that comes from. Is that shameful? (laughs) Like, is that the Declaration of Independence? Um, But we have rights as women and as birthing people. And it's in my perspective that the ones that I'm going to share today just belong to us because we are birthing the next generation. And so because we benefit mankind or humankind with our bodies and this this ability we have to give life, and men also contribute to this process, um, but because we're the ones who open up our bodies and go through this extremely vulnerable stage of pregnancy, delivery, and postpartum, which are all each their own stages. A lot of times the blogs, you know, they talk about conception and pregnancy and choosing your baby's name and and birth plan, but they do not even talk about postpartum. In fact, I wrote for a blog. I won't mention who they were, but I was a guest poster as a postpartum coach for them. And I invited them to create a postpartum section of their blog because they didn't have one. They had all those other categories, but not postpartum. So postpartum is a legit part of the process. We like to rush and get through it and forget it's a thing and try to get out of it as fast as we can. We'll talk about that more in these rights. Anyway, I digress, but these these came through today. So without further ado, I wanted to share these. If you have not left me a review, I need you. I need your support as a creator in this world. You guys, AI. It's, it's taking over the world. Like creators that take time and energy to draw upon their life's experiences and put aside their family obligations to create content, they need other humans to openly value that content more than ever. So if you have not left me a written review on this podcast, this is now my 339th episode for you. Please take a moment to leave me a a written review. So if you have Apple Podcasts, you just click on my podcast, scroll to the bottom where it says, um, write a review. It usually is in purple. You click on that and it opens up a box where you can title your review, click the stars, and then write some words and then submit it. And sometimes it takes one or two days for Apple Podcasts to get it up, but I would sure appreciate that sisterhood 
um, as we help each other out over the internet in this amazing digital age we live in. Okay. If you also are new over here, you may want to download my free mini course. It's called Get Out of the Postpartum Rut. It's always in the show notes. I mean, I guess I could have forgotten to put it in one or two episodes, but if you just click on the show notes, which are the links that are underneath this podcast episode, so go to the actual episode, scroll down and look at the links, the show notes. There you can find uh, the link to get a lot of my free resources. I have a free womb healing ceremony as well as a free mini course called How to Get Out of the Postpartum Rut. I also have a free three-part live workshop where it's also going to come with a exclusive private Facebook community and it's coming up at the end of April. We start on April, I want to say 25th and we go through the first week of May. It's going to be three different days. It's a Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday of 40 minute to 60 minute trainings for you guys to really help you, number one, understand and stop feeling so confused and blindsided by the stuff that's hitting you right now with the anxiousness, the rage, the irritability, the postpartum, all the things. Even if you just don't feel normal again, actually that's the title of the three-part training. It's called Feel Like Yourself Again Postpartum. Okay, so when the link is ready to register, actually it is ready, so I will stick that in the show notes. Um, And then I'm doing it through Facebook ads. So I'm going to have a bunch of new people coming here, listening to the podcast and coming into my program. I'm so excited and coming to this training. So get registered for the free three-part training. Feel like yourself again postpartum. We're going to go over the four spiritual and emotional reasons as to why the chaos creeps in. We're also going to talk about the system that neglects postpartum women and the way that it impacts our psyches. And then we will also talk about my framework that I created as somebody who has lived postpartum anxiety and depression and as a five-year now server of postpartum women uh, as an intuitive, a psychic medium, I have created this three-part process or step framework, whatever. Calm your body, calm your mind, calm your life. It is simple. Anybody can apply it. You can do it in the moment with a screaming child, in the moment with intrusive thoughts. It is so groundbreakingly helpful. And my resources are never to compete with or try to replace medical care or therapy. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a doctor. So please do use all of your resources. That being said, I do think that my program and my process has a unique way of resonating with women because I lived it first. I didn't study it first. I lived it first. And then I served many, many women and I've coached over 1,000, 1,200, I don't know how many hours now. And so I have created this process from the ground up, from a grassroots perspective up. And so I'm so excited to give it to you. So register for that and get all the free things at the links underneath this episode. Okay. The first right that I believe that you hand uh, have, <laughs> and by the way, I'm going to be sharing a original poem today, an original poem that goes with this episode. So stay tuned till the end. The first right is to understand that you are not your thoughts. So in other words, you have the right to feel like a human and to not judge your moral character based on the thoughts that come through your brain. You have a right to understand and know that just because you're struggling in this way, it does not mean that you are bad. So just because you have a a thought that you would say is a, a quote, bad thought about harming another person, including a child or yourself, that does not mean that you are bad. Okay, so the first right that I believe that women and birthing people have as their hormones fluctuate, as they go through a medical system that cares a lot about the health of the baby, but that very much misses a lot of the emotional and spiritual root causes for a woman that why she's feeling so wonky postpartum. The first right that I want to give you, I bestow this right upon you, okay? As a fellow mother, as a woman, and as an advocate for you, you have the right to understand that you are not your thoughts. And just because your thoughts are bad does not mean that you are bad. You do not need to identify with the thoughts that you are having. I know they freak you out. I know you want to disown them. I know when they come up, it gives you anxiety. You want to run away from them. You want to escape from them. And I also want to invite you to remember, and please feel free to do whatever you need to do to feel safe. Just don't take your own life, okay? But you know, if you need to walk into the ER or call a friend or drop your kids off at a trusted somebody's house, okay? You are not your thoughts. And just because they came into your brain does not mean that you are the source of them. I'm not going to go into right now why I think these come up, although that could be really helpful for you to understand. So I want you to know that earlier on on this podcast, within the last 20 episodes or so, I created an episode all about intrusive thoughts. 
and why they show up and how to handle them, what to do with them. So definitely go check out that episode earlier on in the podcast. But for right now, your right, your human right as a birthing woman is to know that you are not your thoughts. You didn't create them. Okay. And when I say you didn't create them, like I mean you who you identify as. You did not, the identity that you have is not responsible for these thoughts. These don't have to belong into your identity. Okay. They are within you. They are a part of you. They are an experience that you're experiencing, but you are experiencing your thoughts. Okay. You are not the thoughts themselves. And while you are responsible for your actions, I don't believe that we're always responsible for our thoughts. I don't believe that. Because if we were, and sometimes we treat ourselves like we are, guess what? It becomes torturous. We torture ourselves for having had the thoughts. We we project them onto our identity as if we are responsible for them being in existence. But just because you birthed a baby does not mean that you birthed this thought with the same amount of concentration and care. So you are not the thought. So stop over identifying with it. Give yourself a break. You're not the thought. Okay. So you can just see the, see the thoughts. And if you want more information on how to be with the scary thoughts you're having, check out my episode on intrusive thoughts and, or hire me. I have private coaching clients. You can go to lizzielangston.com forward slash consult, C-O-N-S-U-T, sorry, S-U-L-T, consult. You can go to lizzielangston.com forward slash consult. I don't always have private coaching spots available. And then the most cost-effective place to be and where you get a lot of community and also a lot of support because I have my online course in there is my program, Postpartum Freedom. And you can go to lizzielangston.com forward slash community because it is a community. And this year, 2024, anytime you join, anytime this year, up until 2025, you can get in at 50% off and become a founding member. And we have an exclusive chat group that I am directly participating in that you can be a part of. And it is small and mighty for now. And you got to get in there. Okay. So I would join as soon as possible. Okay. The second right that you have is the right to community. I'm not necessarily just talking about my community or online community. It could be your next door neighbor. It could be, um, when I say community, I don't necessarily mean bodies in a room. So, you know, going to your local OBGYN or midwife support group may or may not feel like community to you. Community is when people can hear and understand, when there's emotional availability, when people hold space and listen to your experience and they share theirs, when there is connection through vulnerability with each other. And through that vulnerability, there is connection. And through that connection, there is healing. There is strength given to you through the connection, through knowing you're not alone, through knowing that your story is not necessarily as unique as you thought it was. Maybe it is unique in some ways, but it but it's appreciated through those who cannot relate exactly to it. And then other people actually do and can relate to parts of your story and you can relate to parts of theirs. So it's this reminder and this feeling that we're not separate, that you're not alone. Even if you are sitting in your house with a baby and you're the only adult in the house, you're not actually alone. And when you tap into the resource of community, like real actual community, which there's a science and, and sort of a, a beautiful, unique way to actually experience community. It's not, you know, like for example, joining a free Facebook group for postpartum women or, or for moms who is run, it's run by nobody. You know, there's maybe an admin, but she barely ever checks. There's a set of rules, but that's it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where there's active movement of the people towards each other emotionally, sometimes physically as well. And so, but emotionally you are being seen and you are witnessing others and there is healing and magic and power in that exchange. When I say that, I'm telling you, you have the right to that. So why do we not necessarily always get into that by ourselves. I will say there's been so much improvement with community. There really has been. I don't want to just have this be like, I'm just sitting here and complaining about all the things in the world that aren't right and aren't up to my standards or whatever, because that's not the vibe. There really are so many beautiful communities online now and even in person through your midwife or your OB or things like that. And the tricky part is that even if they're there, there can still be a huge separation which is the opposite of community, is separation and isolation. There can be this separation and this isolation that happens between us and the communities that might be near us or accessible to us on the internet. And so community actually starts 
in the realms of one's own heart saying, I'm re- I'm willing, the pain of being alone and isolated and separated is greater than the scariness of stepping into a room and putting myself out there and saying, I'm struggling or saying, I'm just going to be a fly on the wall and listen to your story, sister, somebody, you know, that I don't know. That is essentially where you want to get to is that the pain of the aloneness and the terrifyingness of being alone is not as big or sorry, is bigger than the pain of, or the fear or the scariness or the discomfort of stepping into a room. Now I do want to say here that I believe that this is a right. And I believe that this is how women have for generations thrived and survived is in community. And with the digital age that we live in, it can look different, but it can also get in the way of community. And so we have to be so careful. Um, When I say that I believe you have a right to community, I believe that it's something that women have always naturally relied upon and used as a tool to be safe uh, around institutions that were not providing them with the safety that they needed. So for example, marriage right? We went through the ages where women were very much encouraged to get married. I mean, if you watch old movies, I I watch them sometimes with my daughter and it's like marriage is the end goal of every woman and especially her mother. (laughs) I'm thinking about Pride and Prejudice, how her, their mom was just so obsessed with marrying off her daughters to wealthy families because they didn't have any sons in the family in Pride and Prejudice, the main character family, okay? Elizabeth Bennett's family, they didn't have sons. And in that time, the land and the wealth only could be passed to men. And so marriage was something that was a negotiation and it was necessary for women to have basic security and stability. But sexually or emotionally, it was not always safe. And so women would use community with each other, not necessarily always, you know, um, structured gatherings, but just sharing their secrets, sharing the hardships and having a sense of security through numbers when the system favored the security of men. And so the institution of marriage, while it provided some stability and security, it also took away others for some women. Gratefully, there are really wonderful, good, safe men out there, but there were also ones that were not. And, you know, abuse and lack of safety goes both ways and through all genders. But I'm just overall, you know, zooming out here and talking about women and how we have evolved when life's events outside of us that made us vulnerable for whatever and exposed us in whatever way. And for, you know, we used community to rely, like to get through that. And so when it comes to uh, women specific and feminine specific life events, such as pregnancy, birth, miscarriage, conception, trauma or troubles, um, infertility, and postpartum, because every single one of those is unique to the experience of a woman, community has been how we thrive and survive, especially in a healthcare system that does not always understand the needs of a woman. Okay. We are coming out of a couple, few decades where the research and the resources and the medicines have been created through scientific studies done on men mostly. It is finally starting to change, but you guys have to understand putting uh, the, the money that's required and the, the scientific methods that are required to study the body of a woman versus studying the body of a man when a woman could be pregnant and carrying another child. A woman has a menstrual cycle. Her hormones are constantly shifting. Shifting. It's just easier and cheaper to study men. And so our system has, our medical and healthcare system has been largely developed on the backs of tri- scientific trials on men because they are more consistent. They're easier to study. This is literally a thing Okay, if you don't believe me, look it up. There's a huge disparity. And so what we just need to understand, I'm not trying to attack the system, but what I'm trying to do is to empower you with eyes to see the real gaps in the understanding that our system, our medical and healthcare system has of our bodies. And even though there is knowledge, a lot of it is lacking the feminine. So the masculine is the 3D, the physical realm, right? They understand the surgeries needed and the blood loss and the measurements, but there's a lot of lack of understanding and science around the emotional and physical, the more subtle aspects or the feminine aspects of our bodies and what they need to feel comfortable, for example, in a birth circle so that we can give birth uninhibited without birth and, um, you know, uh, what are they called? Complications, right? Birth complications. But when a woman doesn't feel safe, 
and she's surrounded by all men and she doesn't trust her providers. Yeah, her body does stall and there are more birth problems. And that's not the only reason that we have birth complications, but this is just an example to help you see how you need community to help educate you in a way that the system doesn't and cannot. You need other women, older women, wiser women, or maybe not they're much they're, they're maybe they're not that much older but women who have gone through these throes of birth you know conception pregnancy birth and postpartum in a way or miscarriage and infertility in a way that you have not and so there is a value and there is a human right to have community and i want to invite you to consider that getting into a community that is a good one, one that really is there's time and money and energy and effort put into the quality of the community and that the women that are there all have similar commitments to being and showing up in the community, which by the way, usually this is a paid community. The paid ones are the good ones. Um, You can be healed, uplifted, helped, and supported in ways that right now you need, but you don't know how to do on your own because you're not supposed to always do them on your own. It's 1212 angel number, okay? So I have a community. You can go to lizzylangston.com forward slash community. I plan to have it be a thriving, beautiful community. And real quick, I want to share a story with you. The story is I have a new private client. She hops in with her second session to me with me privately. So her second private session is just me and her. And she is really distraught. She has actually needed to go to the ER this last week for her anxiety. She's felt so alone. She doesn't have any English speaking people. She's in a completely new area that doesn't speak English near her. She's just under supported to a large extent. And she tells me that she just needs to hear from other women that it's going to be okay. Like, you know, I can tell her that all day long, but she feels like she needs to hear it from other women who recently have been through what she's been through. So I said, can I gift you, because you're my private client, let me just gift you and bring you into my community. And right now my community is is small. There's like five of us, but now we have six, okay? So she comes in and I, I specifically asked the girls, the women in here, who are all postpartum women at various stages that have all struggled in their own ways with anxiety, depressiveness, et cetera, birth trauma. And I tell her, I say to them, can you guys, you know, here's this new member. This is her name. And she gave me permission to introduce her. I introduce her and I speak to specifically what she's struggling with. And these women showed up and they start sharing hope from their own stories. And they don't preach to her and they don't try to coach her and they don't give her unsolicited advice, but they lift her and they say words that she needed desperately to hear. And it was like medicine to her and she just melted. And she finally recognized that she had been living her life in a way that left her without community and that she had not prepared and made community a part of her postpartum and a priority. And now she was suffering because of it. But gratefully, my community is there. And so if you are a woman who finds yourself alone or under-resourced, under support it is scary, woman. It is scary and you need and, and deserve and it is your right to have community. Okay, and then the third and final right that you have is you have the right to a full recovery. You have the right to rest. You have the right to hire and to have paid support for you. I wish and I pray that there is a day in my lifetime when the insurance companies give more medical coverage and support to women hiring postpartum doulas Yeah. Did you know that's a thing? A postpartum doula is a thing. If you didn't know, a lot of women don't know. I hope you do know, but Google postpartum doula near me in in, in Arizona. There's an amazing community called Cherry Blossom Doula Services. They have sleep helpers for postpartum women. Granted, they're not always cheap, but you can hire friends to do these things for you. The postpartum doulas though, I did hire one. It was incredible. Amazing. She cooked me meals. She took my baby so I could sleep. She picked up my house She asked me how I was doing, but really wanted to know. She talked to me with me about my scary thoughts. She talked to me about what she's seeing that works for other women that she's helping. Her full-time gig, the only thing she does for work is hanging out with postpartum women and serving them and lifting them and helping them navigate what they're going through. So look up a postpartum doula. But you have the right to this type of support. You also have the right to be weak, to be undone, to be not put together. You have the right to be in a body that hurts and to not do as much because of it. You have the right to have somebody help you go to your appointments, help you drive to your appointments, especially if you were a C-section mama, especially if you had any surgery on your perineum or any parts of you. You have the right to support and emotional support with infant loss. You have the right to hold back and not do as much and rest and stay in bed. Now, if you resonate with what I'm saying and you know that you haven't been doing this, I want to invite you into my community because. The reason 
we're not doing so well. One of the reasons is we have what I call a sister wo- a sisterhood wound, okay? So maybe you've heard of the mother wound. Maybe you've heard of the erasure of the feminine. But essentially, because of the way that the systems that have been, in, been put in place by people in power that were not women, uh, who didn't have the priorities of women and who had their own fears that were projected onto all the people that were not in power, not just the women, but this impacted women in a way where our our archetypes, like the stories that have been told that could help teach us and nurture us in understanding who we are and our power and our wisdom and our fortitude and our strength and our thriving as women, they've been deleted or they've been twisted so that all that we really have to understand for ourselves is either we are saints and we give and serve and do and we're so saintly like Jesus or something, which I'm not hating on Jesus, but like the two archetypes available to women are essentially the saint including the mother she she gets put in that pedestalized place but she but she you know there's a great cost to being that way cuz she has to just stay in this box of like this is what a mom does do this and you'll be praised or there is the whore and the um you know the devilish witchy woman that in a bad way and there are so many other archetypes that we have had deleted from our history and so I'm not going to go into that tons right now but what I want you to know is that if you want to be supported and thriving as a woman, it's going to be up to you because the system is not going to have that built in. And so this is why I created Postpartum Freedom, which is my online community. It's where I bring in healers and people who hold ancient indigenous wisdom. And it's where I bring in my wisdom as a woman and I I bring in the wisdom of us as a community. It is a safe place to talk about what you're experiencing we do it carefully so that we're not triggering each other. We're not oversharing in a tra- traumatized, raw way, but we are asking for support in our vulnerability and in our low times. And we have structure in place. So not just love and emotional support, but structure through my curriculum and also through a set of community rules that allows women to only be helped and served and uplifted. And we're constantly learning and improving and I'm so excited, but you can go to lizzielangston.com forward slash community right now. And up until January 1st, 2025, you can get 50% off and you can become a founding member, an OG, an original in this community. And it can be a place that really is a resting place and a stepping stone for you to up-level yourself as a woman first, leading yourself first, then your family. And you can actually, through a powerful, solid community, you can uplift your entire family. You can redo the systems in your family. And that's what I want for you. So go to lizzielangston.com forward slash community. Okay, and now as promised, I wanted to read an original poem that I wrote called The Feminine Deep. So if you haven't heard my poetry before, I have a separate podcast called Restoring the Feminine. And on that podcast, as of now, there's just one of my other original poems called I Hear the Goddess Coming. I think it's episode seven or eight of the Restoring the Feminine podcast. That is my post-Christian deconstruction podcast. It's feminist. It's restoring the feminine, okay? And I go into a lot more women's history and stuff like that. But I wanted to read one poem to wrap up today's episode. So I hope you enjoy this. I wrote this on September 18th, 2023. I was four months postpartum, a little less than four months postpartum with my baby, Ren. Here it goes. It's called The Feminine Deep. I hope it inspires you. The Feminine Deep. There is a place inside the feminine mind that is as deep as the deepest oceans. Once a woman learns how to swim past her shallows, where there are drift thoughts, like driftwoods, driftwood, and washed up cans of programming and false identities. Once she learns how to paddle and swim the frequencies of her mind, she will float out past all solid land into a portal to the feminine deep. The feminine deep, a place where few mortals make it to. The feminine deep is as wide as an ocean. It's full of secrets of undiscovered things, places where the light of the masculine has never shone. There are wild things, feelings of rage as large as the deadliest stormy seas, creatures of cravings, and dolphins of delight. 
The feminine deep is ancient and has been protected from criticisms and those who seek to shape her mind. It's a place where the water is still pristine, where caves of crystals tower deep, secretly, shining in brilliance with wisdom and gifts for this world. The feminine deep is calling forth in women. It's calling them in, like a siren in the whipping winds, because now it is what the world needs. So woman, be free. Take control of the raging seas of your psyche. Paddle forth, past the feminine wreckage on shorelines that you see all around you. I'm going to insert postpartum depression and postpartum women. Past the carcasses of women falling into false, uncaring hands. Past the women drowning from not knowing they are divine. Swim, woman. Past the point of hearing any voices. Past all signs telling you where to go. And then when a voice inside of your stillness tells you, float on the seas of your psyche. Trust perfectly. Release completely. Surrender your body to the goddess, to the spirit of woman. And just as you feel uncomfortable, just as you pass the safety of the shores, there you will not drown, but you will be taken deliberately, carefully, royally to your mystical, magical, feminine deep. It's copyright 2023, Elizabeth Langston. Thank you so much for listening, you guys. I hope you join us in my community. There will be bonuses for those who are joining with the three-day event, the three-part free event, Feel Like Yourself Again postpartum. So you can go to the link in the show notes to register for that event at the end of April. Otherwise, you can join us right now. I'm so excited. We are teaching a class on April 10th. Actually, today, I think we were bumping it to this coming Monday, but I'm teaching live classes um, now that we've got members. It's just such a great place to be. It's so rich with knowledge and understanding and wisdom. You can really come and put yourself back together in there. We would love to have you. And I'll see you in next week's episode. Thanks again for sharing with a friend. Leave me a written review. Okay. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Mama, friend, sister. Hi, it's Lizzie. I am so grateful that you chose my podcast today. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I want you to know that I have more help for you, more hands-on help to uplift you and support you, including a free text message series, as well as a popular free mini course moms love. It's called Get Out of the Postpartum Rut. I also have a coaching membership community for postpartum moms. You can check out all of these at lizzielangston.com forward slash work with me. That's Lizzie, L-I-Z-Z-I-E, Langston, L-A-N-G-S-T-O-N.com forward slash work with me. I'd be honored if you checked out any of my stuff and thank you again for listening. You are stronger than you know.